do you want the good news or the bad news? There is no girl that has ever not replied to that message from me. I could text Kim Kardashian tomorrow and she would reply. I would say if you've slept with above 20 girls, you're top 80%. For real. You look at some of these rappers, shout out Unknown T and Jay Huss. They're ugly youths, but they're chopping gal. Well, you slept with three women, yeah? Bro, there's probably more than three women watching this that I slept with you right now. Shout out you guys. And who's one of the fittest girls you've ever picked up? Uh... What's going on guys? This video is sponsored by Louis. Some of you know I'm on Insta as loads. One of the best Instagram names, let me tell you that. Guys, Louis has been building online businesses for the last five to 10 years and he has spent the last five years coaching others one-to-one -one on how to start businesses. Louis has got over 2,000 profitable testimonials. And guys, let me be honest with you. I wouldn't let someone sponsor the show who I didn't vouch for. So trust me, it's legit. Literally, just go send him a DM on Instagram. It's at loads. All you gotta do is say to him, I come from the Blue Tick Show, help me make some money. And I know most of these people out there scams and there's plenty of people out there offering you millions and millions of pounds and stuff like that. Louis is one of the 1% who actually do it properly. Legitly, you don't need nothing. All you literally need is a phone and Wi-Fi. Send him a message and leave the rest to him. Guys, and if you want to know why I'm sitting here pushing it so much, it's because realistically, doing a nine to five ain't going to get you nowhere. And I know most people sit here and say this because they're getting some sort of commission for it and stuff like that, but I really ain't. I'm telling you as a good person, the host of the show, doing a nine to five ain't going to get you nowhere. So go message Louis, say you come from the boutique show, just ask Louis for the business model, let him do the explaining and let him explain to you how he can help you. I'll see you soon. What's going on guys and welcome back to the Blue Tick show. Opposite me today, I've got the man with all the riz. Diego Day, welcome to the show. Thank you, bro. So you're the main man, yeah? You're the one that all the women are talking about nowadays, yeah? <laughs> I don't know about the women are talking about in a good way or a bad way, but either way they're talking, right? 100%. Listen, no publicity is bad publicity. I'll give you that. Listen, I scroll through TikTok all day long and all I'm seeing is you chatting up this girl, chatting up that girl, chatting up this girl. Where's all this confidence come from? Well, the work rate's mad. That's what happens when you post like <laughs> twice a day. All of my friends say to me, but I can't get you off my fucking screen. Um, the confidence comes from a place of not caring, really. But it's a, it's, a, it's a journey. It's not just a decision. And I tell people all the time, you can't just make a decision like to be confident, but you can make the decision to change your aspect of, of, of the concept of confidence and then begin the journey to confidence. Have you always been confident? What's going on guys? It's your host, Mikey Mellon. I just want to say thank you all so much for the support. Guys, I need a massive favor. Before we dive into this video, scroll down, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Let's go. Um, I'd say I've always been quite carefree, but confidence is a deeper meaning. So childhood, Diego, what was you like? What was your upbringing like? Where are you from originally? Bro, I'll be what real, was, was school a, like? I was a fucking annoying kid. That's what I remember. <laughs> so not much has changed. Um, I was, I would say I was your, your, your normal guy. I was super good at sports. I was super friendly, outgoing. Some people found me a super warm and a lovely kid. Some people found me as a lot and annoying. Um, and I think I've used the positives of what I was as a kid to grow, to be a, a, a kind young man. Um, and what my what my uh, family would think of as a, as a polite young man. But as a kid, yeah, I, I would definitely say I had my fair share of interactions with people, which I'm now displaying on a on a public. <laughs> and in school, was you was you getting girls? I I was always a face man. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if it was the, the eyes. I didn't ever have hair like this. Like my hair used oh, to be shorter, but I didn't know it was curly like this until I grew it out. I haven't cut it now in four years. Um, you don't even get a little trim? Nah. Just Nothing? The, just the size and a little goatee. Coming through, <laughs> coming through, <laughs> coming through nicely. Um, nah, I, don't, I haven't touched this in four years. Reason for it or? I like it, man. You just, what made you start to grow your hair though? Or nothing, you just thought, let me try it one day. Yeah, now it's just like, if I cut it, yeah, poof, nice. yeah, boy. Nah. nah, if I cut it, my image is gone. Yeah, yeah, change man, change man. Yeah, but some of my bloodline's bald, so. You can't risk that, you gotta, keep, you gotta hold on to that for I'll real. be off social media so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> the man will be saying, where's he gone, where's he gone? No, so listen, in school, was you always with a popular girl? What was it like? I can't remember too tough. I was always good at talking to girls, but school was like a, it was different. You weren't all in control. It was all about popularity, this and that. But listen, I, I was doing bits. Yeah, I've always <laughs> been about a block. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
by school. I can't remember too tough, bro. I don't remember school so much. So look, on social media, everyone knows you for being confident, walking up to girls, saying stupid chat up lines, getting their numbers, snogging them in public. I see you in, was it Ibiza or Marbella, getting girls sitting in your lap, and I'm just sitting there like, bro, that girl's definitely got a man. That relationship's ruined. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> but where did that journey start? Because it's, at the end of the day, it's a journey of you're a social media face now. You didn't just wake up one day and say, fuck it, I'm going to go chat with girls and film it. Was there someone you looked up to <laughs> or was that literally just the, the goal? Um, the journey started, wow, when you say it like that, it's, it feels like it's been a long time. It's only It's been less than two years, to be fair. The journey started um, when I made the decision to start working on social media. I worked behind the scenes before. I did some marketing bits here and there. Um, and I decided, I always knew that I was going to be in front of a camera. When you got a voice like me, you always want to be in front of the camera. Um, and I felt like the shit that I needed to say, I needed to portray, needed to be heard. Because I do strongly, strongly feel that we're coming to a time where um, guys are really struggling to do what I make look so easy. But the point of it is that there is a lot more that goes into it than you'd think. Anyway, the journey started um, when I made the decision to go on social media and I was like, what am I good at? <laughs> Naturally, as a man, you look at what you're good at and you think I'm good at chatting to gals. So I ran with that and... Um, Bit by bit, poco a poco, I'm sitting in my bed with fucking widows sitting on my laps. <laughs> Who was your cameraman? Uh, we always had a little crew, like other people that were doing the public interviews. Okay, um, so shout out Yeah, so we all helped film for each other. I, I still do it now. People are mad when they see me in public. Like, Bro, you're helping your man then film? I'm, I'm still helping the people's film. I get a cameraman now, now and then when I'm feeling a bit bougie, but... Hello, scroll down, hit subscribe, let's jump straight back into it. Uh, question do you ever and truthfully don't waffle me do you ever get nervous like you see a girl on gram couple million followers you see her in ocean beach do you get nervous a little bit first of all the no waffle respect me bro I can't, what, I, gotta, I gotta be real with it what am i gonna get nervous about talking to a, a, a what a female uh, have, you, have you ever had a past relationship no comment <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you this one thing there is nothing to get nervous about Going and approaching a girl is a complete win-win situation. There is nothing at risk. And this is what guys don't seem to understand. There is completely nothing at risk. You are going with nothing. Nothing in your hands. No money. No no, no Instagram or, or Snap at a girl, yeah? So you go over to her. And the worst case scenario is her rejecting you. And the solution of that is you walking away with exactly the same thing as you went with. Apart from maybe an improved resilience. More confidence to do it again. I always tell the guys, if you really want to be confident... You have to put yourself in vulnerable situations. That's when you grow the, the most as a man. So you don't feel nothing. You walk up to any girl, draws any girl, no problem at all. Bro, if I'm on my phone and I look up and there's a girl like a centimetre away from me, oh, yo, this, this. I'll decide if she's laying later. But first, I'm not going <laughs> to miss the opportunity. You're going to take the number and I'm if you're going to message her, you message her. There are limited beautiful girls these days because they're all getting cuffed up and hidden away. By men that are, that, are, that are too insecure to let their but girl you know, go on the street. I, I once heard that it's a lot easier to move to a girl in a relationship because you're only competing with one man. <laughs> I, that's what I heard. That's what I once heard. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I don't shy away from gallant <laughs> relationships. Best know that I never get taken seriously. But listen, I think I'm a. I think of myself like a Samaritan. I'm doing the work of uh, of of well for the men. I'm doing the work for the men. I'm out on the street. If if I'm showing that your gal ain't loyal, yeah, I'm no Chris Brown. But at the end of the day. If your girl isn't loyal and you want to pick that on me, it's not, this bro, is, no, it's not your fault. Do you know what I'm saying? I always say, yeah, if you if she says she's single, if she says I got a man and you know me, then it's a problem. Then it's wrong. If that's you disrespecting me, but if she's acting like a hoe, well, it's not it's not a guy's fault. It's my girl's fault. I gotta to say to her, yo, you gotta keep it stepping next. But no one said I'm chopping these gal in relationships. I'm just showing their man that. It's not the right woman for you. She don't. She don't deserve you, broski. Or you need to get your shit up. Do you ever have boys DMing you chatting shit? Nah, just girls begging me to take the video down, saying my boyfriend doesn't want to see it. I don't have boys. I have like I don't know, maybe I have one one time. You must have had one boy, bro. I have one, bro. But, but most of them don't. What, what are they gonna say to me, bro? You, Why'd you, you move to my girl? Right, you proved me that my girl was not loyal. Thank you very much. Enough guys in my DMs asking me like, oh, bro, do a loyalty test for my girl. Please text my girl. Please move oh, to my I girl when you see her. This that. is her Insta mad things. Yeah. I could never, ever be that guy ever in my life. So where did you... So obviously you've been in this game now. You moved to girls, you do it all. How are you going to find a, a wifey? Because you must not trust no women. Let's be real. I have a very open mindset. 
Um, I feel like closing off your mindset is a killer. Yes, of course, by experiences that I'm gonna have been in, I'm I'm gonna think a certain way. But um, I have slight faith. The truth of the matter, it, I have it, slight faith, bro. The tr- <laughs> truth of the matter is that the girl aren't wifey nowadays. It is half the girl for for double the man, as it used to be half the man for double the girl. A decent, hardworking man used to be a, a super attractive, valuable, wanted male. Now, like a man with dreams and, and aspiration and hard work that's doing okay, he's doing well, he's puckling, and he, but he's got bare ambition, he's doing all this. He's like, eh, you're good, but the 60-year-old man in the club with 100 Gs on him is, is, is more attractive. Yeah, no, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true. I think our generation's finished, though. Done. I think it's genuinely finished, like men and women, both ends. I'm not just violating women or just men, but like, I think men have lost their masculinity Men don't want to be men. They're, they're expecting girls to move to them. We're men. We're meant to go over, get the number, take her out, do it all. And like even nowadays, I see men like, i, I got a restaurant. My dad's got a restaurant. And you have them coming out on dates and they're splitting the bill and shit. And I'm thinking like, but how do you expect that woman to take you serious? I don't know. Maybe it's the way I've been brought up, but you're the man you pay. End of. It, it, but that, that's a short cycle. Now, I'm very much coming on the vibe that it's men and women's fault as well. See, if a woman told me to be feminine and let her do this, I'm like, listen, I am who I am and you're not going to change that. But at the same time, it's a cycle of women asking to be more independent and, and feminine or, or, sorry, almost masculine. Guys reacting to that going, okay, that's fine. And then girls complaining about us not being masculine enough. So that's the cycle. Uh, but at the end of the day, as a man, I don't think you should listen to society. I think a lot of men are listening to society. As we all know, listening to society gets you nowhere because society will tell you what you want to hear to make us peasants weak and slaves. So how, how do you think that our generation men should be acting nowadays? Um, completely independent. This is how you look. At, you you got to find a chart for your value. Value comes in a few different ways. Money, appearance, and, and status. Have I missed one? No. Money, Money, appearance, appearance and status. Yeah, yeah, where you are in life. you got to check yourself. Now, if you're an ugly you, don't ever think ugly you can't get... You look at some of these rappers. Shout out Unknown T and Jay Huss, but these men are chopping gal every night. (laughs) Bro, for real, for real. Bro, fresh home straight out the slammer. Unknown T's my guy, but these guys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're ugly youths, but they're chopping gal. (laughs) And at the end of the day, you've got to work on your value somewhere or another. As a man... We are now getting to the stage with men and women where we're asking the opposite sex to bring so much to the table, we're not looking at what we're actually bringing to the table. And as a man, yes, it's very competitive and hard to bring to the table, but if you're obsessed, if you've got a fucked up mindset where you're obsessed with making yourself a superhuman, then you will fucking, you'll bring the value you need to bring to a woman and then you can go and start demanding stuff of girls. So how does a, a man who doesn't feel like that, how does he become one of them guys? you got to put yourself through fucking hell. You've got to put yourself through hell. You cannot be scared to enter situations that make you a man. Because at the end of the day, without the situations that you're super vulnerable, stepping outside your comfort zones to experience new things and do things every day. If you are looking at the girl you want to talk to every single day and never making that approach, you're never going to get better at it. You're never going to get out of your comfort zone and, and, and grow as a person. So my advice to men that are really struggling to grow value and stuck in a, a rut, as we say, is take the fucking step. You have to take the step psychologically and physically to decide who you want to be. And and with me, it was looking at my life. I never had a bad life. I was never in the fucking trenches like yeah, on yeah. a mad thing. But I always, I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, I refuse to be anything less than great. Anything less. And and. But it's a know. lot easier, it, like us. I say, I think I'm a very confident guy. I'd have no problem getting girls like you, you say as well. We can say that stuff. We can sit here and say, yeah, you got to be the man. You got to work hard. You got to do this. You got to do all of that. But there's men out there who are shook. They leave their house and they can't even walk into a shop to buy a drink. They're like, yo, I can't. I can't. I'm scared to talk to that girl to all get a drink. Like, how does that guy with that all that anxiety to talk to women? Because there's guys like that, and that's what's happening nowadays. It's within the next twenty years, I think all men are going to be like that. The way it's moving. How does he? What does he do? Does he go gym? Like, what is his steps? Obviously. You done it yourself. You looked in the mirror and said, "You know, I'm going to be the greatest man. I'm doing this." How does he, that guy who suffers from anxiety, become that man? That's exactly what I'm going to tell him. To do. I'm going to tell him to get a fucking mirror. The first thing you're going to do if you are a struggling man is get a mirror, buy it, go to IKEA for a free one if you can't afford it. I don't give a fuck, and you're going to look at yourself for 10, 20 minutes and ask yourself who you want to be. Because at the end of the day, we're not all made the same. There is a circle of life, and at the, there has to be something at the top of the jungle, and there has to be something at the bottom. There has to be lions and ants, and, and that's the way life is. But as a man, I would love to encourage every single person out there before they die and say to themselves, I didn't get the chance to, I should have done this. Look at yourself long and hard in the mirror and decide 
who you want to be as a human. My journey is only just starting. I'm no one to preach that I've made it and I'm at the top. I, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. And this is a tiny, tiny aspect of, of where my growth is. But if you never have that mentality, if you never decide to take the step, then it's never gonna happen. It's like anything, bro, just, just think of it like a, a running race. If you never take the first step, you're gonna be yeah, stuck yeah. at the start. Yeah, you're gonna lose you take one step, the, the, fir- the, the end is still far, but it's one step at a time and you gotta be pushing in the right direction. I think the first step is waking up in the morning and doing every single thing you can every day to push yourself to the, to the limit. People ain't, ain't made for it, bro. Diego question, have you ever experienced heartbreak? And don't give me no, no comment. Have you ever experienced heartbreak? I'm just used to the feds now. I, 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 was, I was pre-entered on a no comment vibe. Um, Bear in mind, guys, as Diego pulled up to the studio, he got pulled over by feds. Literally, we've walked outside and there's feds. But I just, one of them was a girl, so I just rizzed her. And <laughs> she was like, oh, no worries. Got an Insta, she was on her way. That was cat, by the way. <laughs> um, go on, tell me, have you ever experienced heartbreak? For real. Define heartbreak for me. Have you ever been in, in a relationship? Have you ever been in a toxic relationship? Have you ever been in a relationship? Toxic is a big word. I've been with a girl. Heartbreak, I feel like when you're in love and you have to leave that, naturally we'd call it heartbreak. But you see with me, it's very difficult to break my heart because as a man, I always decide to be in control of it. I feel like when your heart truly breaks, it's when someone else is in control of your heart. Now I get that in a relationship, man, they want to give their hearts to a girl and exchange hearts and do all this lovey-dovey shit. (laughs) But as a man, unfortunately, even though you want to push emotion, I'm not saying don't push emotion and be emotionless. You want to push emotion towards a girl because she needs that emotion from you as well. There needs to be a, a bond of love. Always stay in control of your feelings and your emotions. Always. Never get to the point of crying with your girl. Never get to the point of really, really opening up so she can have the chance to stab you unless you are in a, a time and place where you're in mad trust and, and that is your ride and die for sure. Um, so a big advice from me coming from a point of view where I've been in one is take relationships a bit slower than people try to it's okay you've got time like it's it's all good to answer your question heartbreak no but I've been in love with a girl and it's hurt me to move away from her guys this video is sponsored by Scent Salim make sure you use the code bluetick25 at checkout for 25% off your order this spray right here trust me this oud spray so me, I'm one of them people where I like my sprays. I like to smell good. But this spray right here is different. And I'm not just one of them people that say it. Guys, they do everything from ouds to candles to diffusers. Trust me, make sure you use the code BLUETICK25 and they'll look after you. And you said to me, don't ever let a woman, don't ever let, like, always be in control of love. If you're in real love, can you control it? 100%. That's like saying, when you're driving a car, can you control it? No, but that's like saying, if you're drunk, can you control it? Don't get drunk. Yeah, but no, no, no. If you're in deep love with someone, yeah? Do you know drunk people that can control it? No. Of course they what, can. What, properly? No, man, come on, that's waffle. For I wait. They can't. What, you're wait. telling me if you're licked? My G's are the best drunk drivers I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I have no. full trust in my no, brothers listen, listen. to get in the I car. I trust some of my boys drinking when they drink drive, yeah? But can you truly say, yeah, if you're going to put your hands in a guy who's not drunk or a guy that's drunk, what are you going to pick? Wait. So, nice. Nah, the drunk song's more fun, bro. It's more about living life. <laughs> you got no, a suicide mission for real. You said it perfectly. The whole point of getting drunk is to lose some of your control. People desire to lose their control. That brings a relationship. Like when you lose the control in a relationship, yes, it's slightly funner for the time being. But when you have to wake up in 4, 4.30 in the morning and come to the reality of your job or your life, it's going to slap you in the face. Same thing with love. Yeah, but then you're saying don't fall in love. No, I'm saying control the love. I'm not saying don't get drunk. I'm saying control the alcohol that's going into your system. I am saying don't get drunk, don't drink. It's, it's, it's a stupid thing to do. But in general, control the alcohol in your system. So you're never not in control. You're, you're saying basically control the amount of love that you allow in basically. You're driving a car. Yeah. The woman is the passenger, always. You are driving the car. The we man, are men. Yeah. We were made to drive. We, we were made to be in control of, of how this world works. Whether you like it or not, it's the truth. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Historically, this is how the world is, it, it, how it runs. Um, the girl is the passenger, right? You can go on a journey wherever the fuck you want. She can even tell you, I want to go left. I want to stop off at a petrol station. No worries. Baby, for you, anything. But if you see that there is danger in the petrol station and she wants to go there, you're going to tell her no. 
Mm-hmm. But if there's no danger, then you can go. You can go along with her. You can turn right, left. As long as you're heading towards your destination, it's not a problem. The fact of the matter is, when you need to override her decision, you are in control of the vehicle and there will never, ever be a crash. And if at some point in the journey, she wants to go so badly left into the danger where you cannot go, yeah, then she can get out the car and walk to her fucking self. But at the end of the day, you are driving the car. End of. And you made the final decision. I can't lie, I respect it. I gotta respect it. That's no, a do. metaphor, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I respect it. Listen, credit where credit's due, but I think it's a lot harder to tell a guy that's in a five, six year long relationship, you're in control. Do you know what it is, bro? If it's when I talk to my boys, yeah, some of my boys, they're one of them boys who fall in love easy, and I always say to them, I got one boy. Genuineness, one boy. If he meets a girl today, he'll tell her tomorrow he loves her. He will tell her tomorrow. <laughs> it's his name, I love bro. her. No, 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 no. I could never hold him up like that. He'll come through the front door. <laughs> no, but he will literally phone her tomorrow. He'll be like, oh, I want to have your babies. I love you. I'm in love. And I'm like, bro, chill out. That girl don't give a fuck about that. If you just say to a girl, I'm a strong believer in 95% of girls want an honest guy. Genuinely, as in, if you just want to sleep with them, sometimes it's better just to tell them that. Like, it genuinely is. Half these girls don't want to hear, oh, let's go do this. Let's go out for fancy. Some girls genuinely just want to chill and have some fun together. Whereas all these guys nowadays, they're just trying to sell dreams and fantasies. And then the girl don't even want that. She's sitting there DMing back the guy that's like, yo, baby, you want to come around tonight? <laughs> and you're sitting there after like, oh, fuck, what have I done? I mean, like, but that's how, that is what we're living in now. But I think women, if we're going to touch on that subject now. Be careful what you say, bro. I, I don't mind getting cancelled. They can cancel me. <laughs> what do you think about our current generation of women? Careful, um, what, careful what you say now. <laughs> bro, this will be called the unblue tick show. <laughs> the D-tick show. Uh, give me a closer closer lane right, to let's, driving. Let's, let's go down the route of OnlyFans women. Oh, this question's boring, man. OnlyFans women are, do what you do. Just don't expect anyone to, to actually have true intentions with you. Do what you do, but accept the consequences. This is exactly the problem with this day and age. Women very much so, men probably too. They do things and they don't want the consequences for it. Everyone wants to eat their cake and, yeah. what's the saying? Eat their- Take the cake no, and take, eat it. Have your they, cake and eat it. What's the saying? Have your cake and eat it. That doesn't really make sense because if you did have your cake, you would eat it, like. I'm not going to stare at it. You know what I'm me. saying? Whoever so made, fair enough. Whoever made it up is barefoot. <laughs> barefoot, bro, is such a fat guy as well. Isn't it? He's just like... <laughs> no, no, but, but the, the, the fact of it is that if you're going to do something like OnlyFans, you need to accept the consequences. Now, I hate talking about this topic because in general, I think OnlyFans is, is fucked because of the way women talk about it. If you are going to do it, I'm not even going to come for you. Just don't go tell me that you're an independent woman like for a man to be an entrepreneur and successful it takes fucking dedication and hard work yes there are men that get lucky and do amazing yeah, things no, through family through bloodline through a luck of getting the right business but at the end of the day only fans a cheat code end of and no one will tell me differently if i made an only fans me personally i guarantee you i'll make a million dollars in my first month yeah, i'll be a millionaire in the first month it's a cheat code to life if i ever hit poverty no i won't even start only fans now i think only fans listen i always draw out OnlyFans on my on my show and I always rinse them for it and say this and that. But I think once you start OnlyFans, in my eyes, it's prostitution. That's it, I can say it. It, it. In my eyes, once you start selling pictures of your body, you end up selling videos of your body. You end up sending videos of you having sex. You, there's no limit. Because you're making so much, you you start off making a grand a week. Now you're making five grand a week. Now you're making 50. Now you're making 20 grand a week. You're like, oh, I've got to up it. Next thing you've got having threesomes, foursomes, just on camera. Then how did you expect that woman to take a man serious? How does a man expect her to be taken serious? I think OnlyFans genuinely has fucked our generation badly. And even down to sex. Women that do that, they don't they don't have that sex. Like they don't care about having sex with you. I used to think a girl can only sleep with a man if they actually had feelings. Now there's no more. It's just they'll, they'll sleep with you if they want to sleep with you. And I think... On that note, we'll skip OnlyFans and we'll let the we'll let the viewers make their judgment on that. But could you take women in our generation serious right now? And if so, all right, question. Let me touch on that more. What do you look for in a woman that you take serious in our generation? I'm a very realistic person. I've got my time, my time to cough down to to get settled. It's not now because how old are you? I'm 22. 
So not only am I young, it's nothing about, I tell you what, settling down is nothing about uh, youth, it's about experiences. A lot of the stuff you were talking about earlier was interesting to me because I feel like guys have to experience some little shit in their life, yeah. but there are also like me, people like me and you who are talking about it, warning them that it's gonna happen. Now I'm not telling you don't go and do it, but don't, like you were told, you were warned about it, right? There are guys that will go and sleep with loads of girls. I personally, I'm, I'm a young man who is kind of bored of, like with sleeping with a lot of, it's boring. Yeah, it's just boring that. with with women that have no value like you know you know that thing what's it called with men post nut clarity yeah yeah, yeah, yeah when yeah. you're not and then you see a girl and it's yeah, like, yeah, eh. yeah, yeah. like <laughs> if you're getting post nut clarity with a girl then that's a problem like you shouldn't be sleeping with girls like that and the truth of it is that us men we count we do numbers games and it's crazy because sex is like bro and i know certain men like shout out you man that are making me look super good in bed that will like go and bust for two minutes and then like call it a day they'll spend the whole day talking about a woman go in two minutes out and then what now so the whole like sex thing is a bit crazy what men want i would say to men like just work on yourself work on yourself to a point where you can have whatever you want at the click of your finger because now we're being told by a lot of people when you're young be free do this do that explore you've got time you haven't got time you haven't got time because now you've got 17 year olds making millions of dollars yeah, starting yeah. up mad businesses. The case of it is when you're 17, 18 and you're hungry, this is your time to set your life right. Not not start a midlife crisis and then go, I want to do this. Gal in this day and age, um, yeah, it's going to be very hard. I don't think I'm going to get settled down while I'm doing this because I wouldn't want a girl to be doing something similar. Now, not that girl and men are the same, but at the end of the day, I wouldn't say it was the right thing to do to have a girl and be going out and yes. doing what I do every day. It's not fair. It's not nice for her to see. I would be worried if she wasn't jealous. Like if she yeah, wasn't then, calling then me up every day, wrong. right? I'd want her to like me a bit more than that. Um, so I'm having my journey. When a time comes for me to settle down and make a family, I'm super excited for it. Um, but what would you look for? What would you? What would you? What would you say to men? Because look, I'm, you're young, yeah. There's probably older men on here like, but this guy I don't know what he's talking about. But you, you've done your thing. You're confident. You go out there. You talk to women. You've probably spoken to more women then most of these older guys, I'm not saying that you're more experienced, 100%. I'm not saying that you know more than them, but it, it's a numbers game. You've spoken to more women, so clearly you know more. I've spoken it, with more women, I've taken women on, on more dates, I've slept with more women, I've been with more, it, the, the whole thing is more. It's so, a filter, right? You speak to this many women, you date this many, you, you sleep with this many, and you date this many seriously. So of course, I've, I've done more than 99% of men in the world. So what, bro, how many women you slept with? No, of course I have. Yeah, oh, how many women you slept You'd with? be surprised about how many like virgins there are, like 40, 30. Think about the average guy. He's yeah. not getting girls. Think about me. I would say if you've slept with above 20, 20 girls, you're top 80%. For real? I would say. 20 girls? F you're forgetting about that people yeah, are going to get in relationships. Yeah, yeah. No, there's, uh, to be fair, some of my boys ain't slept with more than five girls. I can't lie. Twenty. Not everyone's like you, bro. No, around, bro, bro, bro your I'm, a one woman, I'm a one woman man. That's I'm one woman man. Do you need to keep telling yourself a few more times yeah. to make it real? <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, no, it's I right, am. I am really. You know, I need <laughs> to just sometimes to brainwash it in myself. <laughs> no, truthfully. But all right, anyway, back to my question. If you could tell yourself, yeah, or you could tell another tw twenty-four year old boy comes up to you, he goes, "Diego, I want some advice, bro. I want to settle down." How do I find the right woman? What would you say to him? First of all, I tell him to make sure his value is at the right place to be demanding the value. If he was a valuable man at a, at a good extent, I'd be telling him to look for a woman that it does depend on your personality, but look for a woman that compliments him in every way. If he's as hardworking as he should be and, and the provider that he should be in a relationship, as, as people like you and I know a man to be, um, then he should be asking a girl that, uh, or looking for a girl that is very respectful to him, that makes him look good, in, in public, around his friends, around people, that is uh, kind and caring, that knows when to support him, when he needs the support. As men, it's like, we don't need a lot of support. We're very independent and successful and, and valuable men. But there are times when we can be helped out in these little areas that we'd like a woman just to notice. Um, and a woman that notices these things and just does it, not a woman that bitches, complains, moans, asks for things, makes your life more stressful. The simplicity of it is, is you need to look at your life when you get a woman, when you're talking to a woman and ask, does she make my life easier and, and a happier place to be? And if both of them answers are yes, then you're probably looking at the right woman. And then from then on, it's just the, the level of respect that she has for you. And if you were to tell him to avoid one one red flag that you've learned from talking to all these women, what would it be? What one thing do these unloyal women have in common? Don't ever think you're the only man. Yeah, for real. But, but, but not in a case of for like, real. she's with other men. When a girl says to you, 
oh, I've never felt this way about a guy before. Bullshit. When a girl says to you, oh, you're the first guy I've, I've done this to, or you're the first guy I've um, fallen in love with, you're never the first guy. It's, it's not true. These girls have lived a life. So you actually think you're getting, just like we think we sell a dream to gal, they can do it to us. Yeah. I tell every guy, don't ever think you're the first guy. Like my friend told me the other day, he was talking about a girl and he was like, yeah, bro, like, bro, like, trust me, like, nah, she's actually serious about me. Like she told me um, that she was going to fly over here and do this. Okay, that, but that's after she's flown to see a next man. Or you're just never the only guy. And it's not a bad thing that she's had guys before or you're not the only guy. It's a bad thing that she wants to lie about it because that means she's lying to enough man and that probably means she's got something to hide because people that lie have got something to hide. Yeah, no, it's true. I always say to everyone, you're, n you're never the only man. Be realistic. Even, even when a girl says like, until you find a good, good, loyal girl, like, because listen, there are still loyal girls out there. There is. I can't knock every single girl, but I'd say there's like 1% left of loyal girls. But if she's talking, if you're talking stages, she is talking to loads of other men. It's whoever's giving her most attention. If you wake up in the morning, text her good morning. If you don't text good morning, another man's texting her good morning. She'll give him attention that day. And then if you text her good morning, she'll... girls just give attention to whoever's giving, feeding their ego. She might wake up one day and say, "Ah, oh, you know, he's he's a bit too much. He's texting me too much. Let me text the other one." But I think I think nowadays it's, you've got to play the game. So many of my boys are like to me, "Oh, but you know, I don't want to play games anymore, man. I just want to settle down." You have to play the game because they're playing it. Would you agree? It depends. Listen, if you want the success rates you want, and you got to play the game. Uh, if it just doesn't bother you, then you ain't got to play the game. I'm taking myself out of the game, bro. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but the I feel like... The game doesn't excite me no more. It's like, I feel like I'm an old man. I'm not going to lie. But how many women you slept with? Less than three. <laughs> Less than three, yeah? 300. Like two, two three or something. Two three. That's, that's what I'm saying. I, I think I'm same. on the I thought you were a one woman, man. No, I am. I said so you're with, switching up now. Two no, three. I slept one woman. No, you said same. When I said two, three. No, no, I didn't like one. I've slept with one. I'm obviously so one or two or three. No, no, it's one woman at the minute. Because Are you I, sure? Because I you said two or three. Her. I split up with her. So now obviously the next one's going to be number two. I'm going to be. So you haven't done yeah, it? Yeah, no, I'm not yet. Not yet. All right. I just need to practice a little bit more. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, you better have action. Hopefully, yeah. Stiff. Hopefully I get, get number two, man. That'd be amazing. Yeah, fucking less, less bicep curls will yeah. hit for us. You know, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it, man. The second one's going to be a special one, hopefully, man. No, but listen, on a serious. <laughs> on a oh, you was joking. I wasn't joking, bro, personally, but... Well, you slept with three women, yeah? Bro, there's probably more than three women watching this that I slept with you right now. Shout out, you girls. <laughs> <laughs> no, have you ever experienced being out in a in Marbella? Cause you, was it Marbella or Ibiza where you went? Or both? Marbella. In Marbella, yeah? Yeah, I've been in Ibiza before, but more But that's where you was months. filming, in Marbella, when yeah. the girl come and sat with you like that one. Has you have you ever moved to a girl, and her man's been there? That is in you've gone over and she's and she's been on it as well. This video is sponsored by Cranbrook Law, an award-winning immigration law firm. Their talented solicitors can help when any struggles arise regarding immigration law. They can help get you the visas they need. They can help get you the staff you need from any other countries. As you can see, the website is on the screen right now. So if you need anything to do with immigration law, message Cranbrook Law and let them help you. Whether you're looking to obtain a sponsor license, receive advice and guidance in relation to compliance and our civil penalties, or take advantage of our know-how and experience across a broad range of business visas, our talented and dynamic immigration lawyers are available to speak to you. Telephone numbers on the screen, emails on the screen, and hit the link in the bio if you need any help yeah i've been to a i've been with a girl and her man's come over i don't like I, i'm not a, i'm not a conflictual guy but actually i made a video like and one one man came over moving mad not with his girl just like he was trying to get a picture of me and i was like bro i'm filming leave it he was like what what i was like like bro <laughs> and all the comments were like what diego's on smoke like that i was like listen it's not even a that thing i'm not a conflictual guy i don't like conflict it's boring it's a uh, it's a lose-lose situation i don't feel like many people are worth me breaking knuckles over um, so if I see a guy with a girl, I won't. But um, I had a, a big issue more recently when I went over to a guy and he was with his girl and they didn't look so cozy. So I just went over. A lot of gay best friends these days. You know what I'm saying? I just went over. I went, bro. I, I went to him first. I went, yeah. I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm a super polite person. I said, is, is, is that your girlfriend? He said, yeah, bro. I said, he said, yeah, why? I said, no, nah, I was just asking. I think she's really beautiful. He was like, okay. So, and what? 
I was like, so if, if she wasn't yours, I was going to I was gonna go and speak to her or whatever. Yeah, but that's the wrong line to drop, Of man. course it's not. That's the wrong I was, I was, I was line speaking to him. To I hadn't drop. even approached the girl yeah, yet. Yeah, but bro, you can't say that. He wanted to turn to me and do the whole, bro, what did you want to achieve by this? I was like, bro, I'm, I was being completely honest and fair to you. I was coming to you to ask because I didn't know. And I'm not going to lie, she's beautiful. So I was going to speak to well, her, but it's, not, it's yours. 9.5. Um, <laughs> and and he, But he wasn't laying. That's why I thought it wasn't together. Yeah, yeah. I'm, and I was sitting there and I actually like, man, like, like, well done, bro. You've done your thing. And he was coming on a bro. What? What? I was like, blow it. I'm not trying to get all like scrappy right yeah. now. It's just not like, I, was just trying to chop the I just came to do a respectful thing. And then, uh, yeah. And then he was just moving mad. I was like, bro, you don't want it. All this cool. But generally, nah, it's more me going to approach the girl and then the boyfriend comes back. But yeah, sometimes the girls are on it. And then this, we have to like cover it up a bit. Oh, that's not For me, if you've got a boyfriend, you don't give your, another man your Instagram. End of. But if you've got a boyfriend, the way I, I'm, a, I'm a bit crazy, I've got some funny rules in my head, but if you approach my girl, yeah, we haven't met, whatever, you approach my girl out in Marbella, for example. Is this one or two? This is, no, it's hopefully two, man. Come number on, two, please, hopefully, two. yeah. You approach her. It's her job to, sh number one, she needs to make herself unapproachable. As men, we know whether you can approach that girl or not. And it, I've been, I think, I've, <laughs> not with me, I'll approach her. No, anyway, but no, I get but, what you mean. Do you know what I mean? There is women where you look at them, eye contact says it all straight away. If you catch a girl's eye contact, it's go time. Yeah. If you look at her and she literally goes, you're like, mm, fuck yeah, but I'll still approach. But Fair I get enough, what you, you mean. Would, but you you know that it's going to be a bit techy. Yeah. Whereas I've, I explain to girls whenever I'm with someone, a guy should listen. You you're a, you're a different breed. You approach because you don't give a fuck. But most men they'll look at you if you're not giving them that vibe, they'll walk away. And I say to her, if a guy approaches you, it's half your fault. You've made him feel like, come over, come over. The door's open. And I try and explain to him, you can make yourself seem unapproachable, but the way I look at it, cheating is, you walk over to my girl and say, and she knows who you are, straight away she needs to say, yo, move. Because she knows what you're there for. She knows you're not there to, to you've got, your one reason is there, you're going to move to the girl. But giving her your, giving you her Insta, cheating, done. Relationship's over. Straight away it's over. Done. Would you end the girl with but it? The first thing I do when I get like a serious potential link is I give her the newest Apple AirPods noise cancellation so she has no fucking excuse. No excuse. Why do you give it? A, what would you mean? Noise cancellation so she can't hear oh, a fucking thing. <laughs> Hello, excuse me, miss, you're beautiful. She's fucking <laughs> she's singing to, to fucking Summer Walker. I don't give a fuck what she's doing. I don't want you to look. I don't want you to find a new spot to sit. Yeah, I don't no. care. The first thing I do to every single girl, buy them noise cancellation earphones, no excuse. Apple, I've got my fucking credit card on lock. <laughs> How many? On how lock. many uh, airports you bought? <laughs> Broski, they think I'm a fucking reseller. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I think. What would you say the percentage of women cheating nowadays is? Oh, I can't. I don't know. I I'd probably look at like, let's say, women past, what in a relationship. It, well, yeah, cheating, yeah. And I think I think you're looking at similar for women and men above fifty percent, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Is that it? I don't know too tough. I, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll be real with you, yeah? And this ain't me being confident or nothing like that. I think every woman and every man cheats if they're in the right situation. I think if you... I'm not saying I'm the best looking guy or I've got the best game or anything like that. But I think if you leave your girl with me, I'll make her cheat. I'm not saying I'm that guy. I'm not. Jeez. No, no, no. I'm no, not no. saying that. I'm not saying I'm that guy. No, 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 but, but would you agree? But, be real. Would you agree? With me? Would you be honest? No, of course. But I, I am that guy. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But that you know for a fact, but it depends what you class cheating as. No, Even I, your girl being alone with me is cheating. I'm, I'm with you on it. Like, giving Insta stuff like this. I, it's I think cheating. it's all. I think it's all being disloyal, which technically is cheating. I, I don't agree with, like... Oh, all right, texting a guy. All right, a guy DMs a girl and she replies, "But if sorry, I'm in a relationship." Is that wrong? Why are you? Do, what, what are you trying to give him? I swear to what are you trying to give to him? Why are you opening the door? Close the door. Hey, don't even. Let, I don't even want to say scene. <laughs> I just want to request removed. That's it. <laughs> Saying scene to me when I've DM'd a girl and it says scene and she's aired me, I'm like, you know, leave me on. I'll text her again. <laughs> Would you really leave me on scene? But to me, that's what how I look at it. Yeah, that's, I, that's, just, I just knock back on and be like, don't act like you didn't see me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> don't act like you didn't see the blue tick. <laughs> nah, I got what you mean. Cheating's, uh, nah, cheating's all in perspective, but at the end of the day, loyalty comes with respect, which I talked about, which is very rare. The lack of respect in this generation is the is part of the problem. You obviously say you know what it's like getting girls, how you should get girls, how to become an alpha male. Why aren't you teaching the younger generations? I am. <laughs> oh, for real? What, for your videos? And I stuff? am. So I've got a, a complete system where people can learn to the point of speaking to me 
directly and I will teach them. I've got a, a f completely free section where I teach guys what you can say, what to do. I've got an absolutely fucking huge community which literally gives you, I call it a Bible. Yeah. And the reason I call it a Bible is it's literally giving you every single thing you need apart from just going and doing it to to what you can what you can do. It's a it's not even a fucking Riz Bible. It's a life Bible. Every single thing you need to talk to a girl. Step by fucking step. I'm talking about a fucking retarded dog could understand it <laughs> and go and get gal after reading this. So th the point of it is is that guys come in there, read all the shit, they get daily reminders, daily updates, daily bits and bobs. It, it's absolutely fucking it's in, it's insane what i'm the information i'm actually giving general people it shouldn't be legal um and it goes to a point where i'm actually coaching guys now one to one um and and telling telling people exactly what you need to do uh the situation is is that until guys decide to take that step that they're not going to achieve anything um but it's there it's there to be learned guys will also be embarrassed to be like i don't want to learn i don't feel like i need it but the point of the, the, the fact of the matter is the understanding that you need something is the first step. It's the first step. Then you build the foundation. Then you take action. Then you have a reaction to it, um, and that's when you become a fucking a fucking superhuman. So look, Diego, you go and chat up girls every single day. Yeah, is there some sort of method behind it? Again, this is something that I'm teaching people how to do because of course, like, of course, there is. It's like anything. One thing I say is good energy beats everything because good energy is the hardest thing to say no to. But there's definitely a method. When I approach the girls, there's like things that you don't see on camera that I, I can break down very easily. Stuff like trying to approach from the front, you got to make a girl feel comfortable because if a girl feels comfortable, that's when she'll hang about. If a, if a girl, the minute a girl doesn't feel comfortable, she's going to walk away. Yeah, true. So there's stuff like approaching from the front, having an open body language, coming across as confident. Confident is super fucking attractive. Like guys will go approaching girls like this and doing all, open your body, relax, show the confidence because a girl immediately will feel more comfortable around you if you're confident. Confidence is very infectious and it's very warm. Um, and when you approach girls, you gotta be clever with how you're doing it. I'd say you gotta always stand out. Guys think they can go and chat to gal and use the same lines here and there, coming from someone who uses a lot of cheesy lines, <laughs> but there's a lot of good intention and energy that comes behind it, which is super infectious. Um, there's a, there's a clever way there's a clever way of doing it for guys, but I'd say get your practice in. See what girls are feeling and not feeling, but go and approach. Um, have an interesting conversation, open up topics that she might not know. Uh, at the peak of the interaction, make sure you close, close how you need to close. Um, if she's super comfortable around you, go for the number. If not, go for the Instagram. Don't take anything personally when you're talking to her. When she hits you with a little, oh, like I'll, I'll try hug girls at the end. They'll be like, I don't hug, I'm more of a handshake. Or, you know them Saudi girls that are on yeah, mad yeah. things. I'm like, babes, <laughs> I'm sorry, girl, babes, I'm can you shake my hand, no worries. There you go, darling. Like, it's okay. You just got to react to, to things and, and be quick on your feet, be confident, but, the thing about confidence is, I always say the same thing. Do you play a sport? No. You ever play football? You play football. Yeah, I play football as a child. See the thing when when you see like, like a team like City play with so much confidence. Yeah. yeah. All confidence does <clears throat> is it allows you to perform at the best level. It means you're relaxed, you're comfortable, and you're able to to function your brain normally. So when you're confident, you're going to be performing at the best level. When you're all nervous, you're going to be doing mad things, shaking around, saying the wrong stuff, stuttering. So be confident, bake, relax, and and perform at the highest level. And what's your go-to chat up line? What's the one that you has got the best success rate? I'm going to give you two things right now. One is a DM that never, ever fails me because the one thing you can get a girl on is curiosity. If you are ugly, but a girl is curious, as humans, we want to know stuff. We're greedy. We want to know everything. So when you text a girl, you're going to text her this exact thing. You're going to text her, do you want the good news or the bad news? There is no girl that has ever not replied to that message from me. I could text... I could text Kim Kardashian tomorrow and she would reply. Bro, if I asked her, do you want the good news and the bad news? She's going to reply to me saying, fuck. Oh, do you know the problem now though? Some of these girls have done that thing where you can't DM them no more. Bro, I'll find a way. I'm Diego wow. Day. <laughs> Buffer, I'll find a way. You can't block me. I'm unblockable. So you're going to text them. Do you want the good news or the bad news? They're going to reply whatever they want. Well, that's 100% hit ratio. And you're going to say the bad news is, or the good news is, you're super, super beautiful. And they're happy with it. They're like, oh, okay, thanks. What's they have to reply sign, but they're not leaving without the bad news, bro. There's no way she's leaving without knowing what's going to happen in her life. So she's going to reply to you and say, what is the bad news? Tell me, I'm fucking dying for you. Now you have her on the hook like a little fucking piranha and you're going to tell her the bad news is that you don't have me with you to compliment the beauty. 
or something like that. You can play it how you want. She's immediately replied to them. Do you, do you make them wait for the reply? Yeah, be clever. I don't be too keen, but don't think about it too much. The Just girl. reply back. Um, so the fact of the matter is, is that either way you're in her DMs. That's the first step. From there, listen, I can't tell you what to do. You're in her DMs. When you see a girl in, in public, you got to hit her with something unique. You got to make her laugh on the first line, as simple as that, because the laugh is going to make her comfortable. I always like, first of all, if I'm approaching from behind, I'll always tap her on her right shoulder, come on her left, because she'll look right, she'll look left, and I'll be right there in her face. And she'll be like, ooh. Um, <laughs> and then once she does that, I don't know, I like to drop a little, I don't like the fact that we're strangers. I like to drop a little, oh, I'm not going to lie, I was walking past you, but you're just mad beautiful, so I'm not trying to like, you know what I'm saying? I had to stop. Um, something a bit cheesy. The cheese isn't to actually work. The cheese is to make the girl laugh. Make her feel comfortable. Again, once she laughs, once she's comfortable, piranha's back. <laughs> and, and who's one of the fittest girls you've ever picked up? We're talking bait. God, how bait we talking? Picked up is 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 a, a big expression. I, I got the Insta, I slid in, and there's things going on there. Like, God, there's, who there's, is it? You know what I'm saying? Uh, for real? Yeah, for real. Big name, big name. Big name. <laughs> big name. But, uh, yeah. You just got to play it, man. It's, it's all about... What, what line do you use on her? I can't remember. Should I open it up? God. Actually, I remember the DM game was crazy here. The interaction was more bov. The DM game was absolutely insanity. I'm talking Pep Guardiola-esque. <laughs> what? Bro, it's not loading, but this needs to load. Imagine if you put... Prime Arnold Schwarzenegger on more steroids. That was this. For real? You got it up? Bear yeah. in mind, I wasn't sure she was going to reply. So I went... Firstly, how many followers? Millie still. Okay, cool. Go ahead, tell us. You have my attention for 24 hours. Drop me a message because I could eat your energy up happily. And I dropped in my number. So we're taking shit to the next level as well. She said, what happens after 24 hours? I said, could be the end of the world. Who knows? I don't want to risk it. What does she do? She texts you. Of course she texts me. Well, you got her number as well, of yeah? Of course she texts me. Have you met her yet? And when a girl... No. When a girl, <laughs> gives, when a girl gives you her number... Bro, bump that's into it. each other. It's in the industry. It's when a girl time. gives you her number, that's it, bro. Yeah, you're in. You're you know in. what I'm saying? I can FaceTime her on no caller ID. She's like, who's this? Hey, baby. Don't hang the phone on me. <laughs> don't hang out the phone. You know who this is. Who is it? But just pretend you know who I am. You know what I'm saying? One of them ones. <laughs> Nah, listen, I, I can't lie. you done your thing. And for her to even reply, she's obviously pre the ground for, hmm, okay, hmm, okay, okay, okay. You know the worst one? When I DM a girl, I go on my story. I always, whenever I DM a girl who's a 10-10, I post a story. Do you know why? To see when they watch it. So they ain't replied, then they've watched the story. I text her back. I see you watch my story. That's my one. No shame, double message. Rate your fuck, thing. Man. I don't, listen, I, I, I care about the end result. All right, I got, I got a question. Is this is this with your one and only girl? Because obviously, when you're with her, you don't message other girls. Because, or is this with her? I'm, I just no, obviously me and her split up, bro. Why are you touch? Why are you hurt the my second one? Why are you hurt my feelings? But I thought you were still hoping that you was gonna pop cherry number two. I'm bet it's confused. Bro, listen, I was with my wifey. We split up. Like, I'm it sorry, hurt my bro. feelings. And I'm sorry, bro. Well, why why are you drawing me out like that? Jump, jump my best advice to get over a girl. Get on the girl. No, not at all. <laughs> no, real talk. This is actually a mad problem with guys simping over girls. Go on, what's the best I want, advice? I want this. This is actually my one of my biggest messages. When you split out with a girl, block her, delete your yeah, images, I delete your photos. Don't click the collectible items. Just get rid of her. Don't ever think that you are alone when you're hurting. Don't ever think that something's wrong with you when you're crying and you don't feel good. Of course you are. The point is that you have to have the mental strength to not message her. You're going to get moments that you so badly want to unblock her. Throw your phone in the fucking River Thames. I don't give a fuck, but do not message her. Do not reach out to her. If you have ended with a girl, that's it. I don't want to hear these stories. I got back with her and we're on and off for the last two years. If you're on and off, you are not together. End of. When you're off for two weeks, you man are doing this and she's doing this. Block her, take her away from your life and have the emotional control to like stay in your fucking lane. You know what I always say, yeah? Whenever you split with a girl and you cut, all ties fully, she's coming back. She's coming back. Whereas when you're, you got to remember, you got to think of it realistically. When a girl knows you want her, she don't care. She'll just keep you there. She'll just not, oh yeah, he's still begging for me back. You stay there. When I'm ready for you, I'll come back. But when you just ghost and say, you know, fuck you, I'm done. She's like, everyone wants what they can't have. 
Everyone wants it. Do you know why it is? It's because you have the control. And when you're driving the car and you throw it out to walk, she's pissed. She wants a lift. <laughs> but if you keep going back as soon as you dropped her off and you go to pick her up again, she's going to say, no, I'm fine walking. I'm fine walking. You've got to make her walk long enough so she's dehydrated as fuck and she can't go anywhere that she wants the lift back and she's calling you to come back. But if you keep going to pick her up straight away, she's going to think she's fine walking alone. You have to be the man in the situation. Every girl will only respect, respect a man that's decisive, that, that makes decisions, that takes control of things. And a man's going back to his girl doing this, this, this. Now, I don't think you should get her back. I don't think you should go back to her unless you're fully in control of the situation. But if you do choose to, it's on your terms, on your terms only. A girl will only respect a man that has, has full fucking control. If you're with a girl, you split up, as she sleeps with another man, is there any chance of getting back with her? Not a fucking chance in hell. Never, ever, ever, yeah? But if I split up with a girl, that's it, that's done. I'm not one of these men that's like, oh, I don't think it's going well, so let's split up, but I'll see how I feel in it. What week. if you split up with her for just, it, you just split up, you're not, you know what, I'm not really feeling it, and then she has a mad glow up, would you go back? No, of course not. You don't give a shit? Because there's a reason I split up with her. Because my rule is, the second that woman's touched another man, it's done. Yeah, 100%, it's done. but there's a reason I split up with her in the first place, and pe people like, a leopard never changes spots. It can grow ones over it, but the spots are still underneath. If a girl disrespects me once, it means she'll do it again. And if a girl disrespects me once, which is going to be the main reason I split out of her, if she shows disrespect, that means she knows she can disrespect me and I can still come to her. Yeah, no, I don't run. It's why well, you never, never, ever apologise to a woman. Because the minute you apologise, she thinks she can fucking play you like a chessboard, brother. Don't apologise. You cannot apologise to a woman. They will take an inch and run a mile. Every single woman. It's what they do. It's what they're best at. They're the best manipulators in the world. We think we are, but we're not. Girls are so much better at manipulating because they have the one thing that everyone in this world wants and it's called a fucking vagina. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you feel like... Are you talking from experience? Have you been hurt? Come on, tell me. Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's dive into the deepness of yeah, it. Yeah, and I took both routes and the only route I worked is blocking it all off. And, was you... Was you up, look, we're men, yeah? We can speak openly. Was you... Did you go down that stage where you was upset? You were depressed about it all? Mad upset. Depressed never because I got other shit to focus on. I, I will always have a balance in my life. I'm always ready to lose one part of my life. It's what you say, right? You have a you have a table. If you put enough legs on it, you chop one leg off, nothing's gonna happen. Yeah. If you have a if, if you have a table with two legs, you chop one off, it's fucked. So you never let something take up a proportion in your life that if it goes, the table's gonna be gonna be finished, right? You have to build enough, um, st like legs on a table to risk one of them dropping off. And, and and when was this relationship with her? Going probably a couple years, between a year and two now. And now, obviously, you've blown up on social. She reached out. Nah, it's not one of them ones still. It's not like a social like thing. But she, she, she reached out in between, wanted more contact. Yeah, for, of course. And you was strong enough where you said, you know what, fuck of off. Of course. Not because I was strong enough. Actually not. I felt super fucking weak at points, but I had too much self-value. I had too much self-respect to do that. Like, I look, in my, I look at myself in the mirror and I say, like, do you actually rate yourself? Because men will want everyone to rate them, but they don't rate themselves. I had too much self-respect to let that happen. I also, the same amount of self-respect I have to live my day with regrets. The same reason I go and chat to every single girl I want to chat to. Because I refuse to have the self-respect where I go, I wanted to do that and I didn't. Like when people are dying and say, I wanted to make a podcast and I didn't. But you know what, yeah, Diego, you probably have a lot of guys saying, oh, he's cocky, he's arrogant, he moves to girls, yeah? One thing I will say to you is, I respect you because your mindset is strong. As much as it's all about girls, yeah, I draw girls and all that. Even down to that, yeah, so many guys would crumble when their ex comes running back or stuff like that. You've trained your mind where it's all about me. This is my life, I'm living it. You've done me wrong, fuck off. And you got to respect that because most guys crumble at it. Their ex comes back, they're like, oh, Mikey, what do I do, bro? She's come back, she's finally come back. Nah, bro, she, you, you ended it for a reason. Keep it moving. That's it. And with that, I've got to respect that part of you. But that's all life is, is brain training. It's getting yourself to a point where these things happen naturally. At the start, a girl texts you, you want to go back to her, you want to let her back in your life. But at the point where you're a fucking super, and I say the word superhuman because I mean it. At the point where you're a superhuman, it's like some someone tries something and it, it's just so natural for you that it doesn't happen. I'm at the point now where I chat to girls and I do anything I want, I'll do it naturally. Whereas I was at a point where I had to push myself to do this stuff. It's the same thing. The example I give every time is you set an alarm for long enough, 4.30 every morning. By one point in time, you will wake up at 4.30 without your alarm. Yeah. But at the very start, it's going to be fucking hard for the first week. Then you get into the second week and it's going to be like, you know, I'm getting good at this. But you have to tell your brain every time, shout out fucking David Goggins. You have to tell your brain that this is just what we do. 
because your brain is going to try and control everything you do but you have to communicate with it and, and take control of it and tell it this is the life i live this is a choice i made to change my life and, and i'm going to live this fucking life it all comes down to the point if you are happy to be a bum or you want something more i know people that are happy to be a bum and i know people that are happy and happy to be bums yeah, that are content with life and that's fine I'm just not that guy yeah, some people enjoy a 9 to 5 that's, that's that this is yeah. the truth you tell someone you want to be a boss they're like no no it's long I don't it's relative that. it's relative but listen you've got to have the top of the spe- you've got to have people at the top you've got to have people at the bottom if it was all at the top it'd be fucked We'd, it would tumble over and I want to ask you to finish this podcast one bit of advice you'd give the younger generation who are trying to go out there and get girls what would it be the biggest piece of advice I could give to younger kids is work on yourself. I know this isn't what you want. Work on yourself to a value where you can actually go and demand higher value of women. When you are at this point, the advice I would give to guys going to chat to girls is approach it with 100% freedom. Don't put any pressure on rejection because rejection is, is something so materialistic and stupid. It, it doesn't matter whatsoever. When you go to approach a girl, you have nothing to lose. Don't put pressure on rejection. Go over there. Be confident. Make the girl feel comfortable. And uh, take it as resilience, the, the rejection. Take it in your stride. Uh, but no pressure on rejection because it completely doesn't matter. We spend so much time in this world caring uh, what other people think that we don't care about, which doesn't make sense yeah, to correct. care what next man think that you don't care about. Um, stay in your lane. Make your lane. Drive your lane. Do your fucking shit. Listen, Diego, pleasure having you on the show. And keep, you know, draws and girls. That's what you do best, bro. Keep doing your thing. Guys, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next episode. Bosh.